Hi, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking to investors about rental property, specifically what numbers to look at when considering a property. There is a tipping point where the price of a rental property will outstrip the potential rental income. You need to identify that tipping point. How much house can you buy and still afford to pay all the estimated expenses, such as mortgage, taxes, insurance, maintenance, and utilities, and still be able to have a positive cash flow left over? Mortgage payments on a small rental property should be no more than two thirds of the total rental income. This is because the rest of the income is needed to cover things such as maintenance, taxes, insurance, utilities, and still turn a positive cash flow. The categories of estimated expenses include, first, mortgage. Your mortgage will be based on how much of a down payment you have saved. On an investment property, you have to have at least 25% down. That means if you have $60,000 saved, you can buy a property that's worth up to $240,000. Second, taxes. If you have a particular property in mind, you can look up public records and get the exact amount of taxes for that property. However, if you do not have a specific property in mind, you can look up properties in your area that have recently sold in the price range you're looking for and get an estimated amount of the taxes based on the average of those properties. Third, insurance. Call your insurance company and get a quote for the estimated cost and property size you're looking to buy. Once you have a property under contract, make sure the insurance on that property is going to start the day of closing so that you are covered in case anything happens immediately. You will also need to look into getting liability insurance that will cover you from things like injury or death that may occur on the property in case anyone decides to sue you. Fourth, advertising. Landlords can advertise their rental properties for free on websites like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Realtor.com, Zillow.com, Apartments.com, Trulia, Hotpads, Buy Owner, Apartment Finder, and there are many more. Even though you may not have to pay to advertise the property online, it might be a good idea to make sure you at least set aside money to buy a for lease sign for the front yard of the property. Fifth expense, recreation fees and homeowners fees. Maybe the community where the property is located has a monthly or yearly recreation or homeowners fee. This would cover things such as maintenance of the neighborhood, use of golf courses, swimming pools, community centers, and other facilities. Six, gas and electric utilities. Most tenants are responsible for paying their gas and electricity while living in a rental property. However, you need to account for when the property is vacant. Estimate how often the property may be vacant out of the year, say maybe one month between people moving in and out of the property, and set aside money for gas and electricity to keep them on in between tenants. Seventh expense, water, sewer, and trash utilities. Many landlords elect to pay the water and sewer utilities for their tenants. The reason for this is to ensure that even if the tenant doesn't pay their bill, the water and sewer utilities will not be shut off. You can imagine how gross it would be if they couldn't flush their toilets and trash was piling up outside. Number eight, routine maintenance and repairs. Maintenance costs can be difficult to predict, but real estate experts say you should set aside 1% of the property's total value for maintenance every year. Ninth and final expense to consider, is reserve and contingency funds. This would be for big expenses, such as replacing an air conditioning unit or a roof when it's worn out. It's best to set aside money each month to allocate for these larger expenses. Before you buy, always hire a professional to inspect the property for potential problems. You've heard the old saying, 
beauty is skin deep, that applies to rental property as well. A home may look wonderful on the outside, but there could be major problems lurking underneath the surface. Decide whether or not to hire a property management company. Most property management companies charge about 10% of the rent every month to help maintain your property. Take time to meet with the property management company and discuss your goals. Tell them how much they're allowed to spend if a maintenance issue comes up and they cannot get a hold of you without it being an emergency. If it's an emergency, they have to go ahead and fix the problem and charge you the expense regardless of if they can get your pre-approval ahead of time. Okay, so to recap, your expenses are mortgage, taxes, insurance, marketing, recreation fees or homeowners fees, electricity and gas utilities, water, sewer and trash utilities, repair and maintenance fund, and then a reserve and contingency fund for emergencies. In the current market where the mortgage interest rates have doubled over the past year, you're going to be hard pressed to find a property that you can afford to pay all the expenses on and still be able to have some cash flow. Unless you're an investor that is prepared to put cash down on a property so that you don't have to worry about mortgage interest rates, I would suggest looking for distressed properties. One that you could put some sweat equity in and instead of flipping it, hold on to it and rent it. This way, when the market goes up again, then you could sell the property for more than you bought it for. The main thing to remember is don't buy unless you find a property that meets your needs. Never be in a hurry to make a bad deal. I hope this has helped my investors understand all the expenses they need to calculate when considering buying a property. Take care guys, see you next time.